The Demise of the Neanderthals, a topic of considerable importance for the history of our species, for the history of our changing planet, and now, back again in the spotlight in terms of Earth's magnetic changes. You may remember last year, we got into an academic disagreement with Dr. Lingam from Harvard University. He had questioned the danger of magnetic events on Earth, and we had presented the evidence that these were indeed extinction-level events. The number one geophysics journal on Earth reported just a few weeks later that indeed they were not only extinction-level events, but that they likely took out the Neanderthals. We'll see that paper again today, but the purpose of this video is to address yet another questioning of that paradigm, and a questioning of the process in modern academia. So this paper came out in the Quaternary Science Reviews in June. The 8th ranked geology journal on Earth, the number one quaternary journal on Earth. This paper by Dr. Axel Timmerman investigated climate change, interbreeding with modern humans, and competition with modern humans to survive, and performed an analysis to see which was more influential in terms of an extinction factor for the Neanderthals. He concluded very definitively that the only realistic scenario is that competition with modern humans drove the extinction. As you can probably tell, this challenges the previous results we've shared. By the way, Dr. Timmerman is a distinguished professor, considered a world expert, and is the current director of the IBS Center for Climate Physics. Now, you may have noticed that geomagnetic changes were not one of the things I listed in Dr. Timmerman's model. Indeed, the Lechamp geomagnetic event, one of the most robustly studied and well-known geomagnetic changes of the last 100,000 years, was missing. So I wrote a letter commenting on the deficiency of that analysis. They refused to publish my letter, and so I'll be doing so myself, and once again showing the rationale of the journal as to why they would not publish my letter. Wait until you see it. But first, let's go ahead and read the letter I wrote, then we'll go through the journal's response. Comment on quantifying the potential causes of Neanderthal extinction, abrupt climate change versus competition and interbreeding. It has recently been proposed that the Neanderthal extinction was the result of competition with modern humans, and not abrupt climate change or interbreeding. That's Timmerman 2020. The main issue of the investigation was to determine the cause of the Neanderthal extinction, and it adequately demonstrated the greater influence of competition with modern humans compared to climatic stress and reproductive dynamics within their model. However, this analysis overlooks well-established theories and examinations in the peer-reviewed literature, and its conclusion is too broad given its scope of study. The existence of dramatic geomagnetic changes during the Neanderthal extinction is well-established. The causal link between the two has been directly explored in terms of the increase in UV light damage to biological cells and DNA due to the destruction of the ozone by solar radiation. These studies have found plausible causation. A quick pause from reading the paper to go over those two cited works there. The two most important papers showing why you can't ignore geomagnetic changes in this instance are one published in this very same journal. That's right, a paper saying the exact opposite of Dr. Timmerman, not found in his analysis. The other, of course, is the one I mentioned that ended the debate with the Harvard professor last year. And again, this is from the number one geophysics journal in the world, showing the causality. Now, back to my letter, starting at the top here, second line down, where it says, while valuable information. While valuable information has been gained in the present modeling of climatic and competitive aspects of the extinction event, the UV radiation damage hypothesis should not be discounted in an analysis meant to proclaim the overall cause of the Neanderthal demise, and it certainly should not be neglected entirely. There are further biosphere challenges from space energy during such a geomagnetic change. Recent studies have revealed correlations between adverse biophysical outcomes like cardiac events and cognitive and emotional stresses and solar eruptions or high levels of galactic cosmic rays. The potential dynamics of these correlations during a geomagnetic intensity minimum have not been explored. Even the well-known UVB stresses on photosynthetic species likely created a more challenging world in which to survive. Another challenge comes in the predictability and stability of migratory species. Both birds and marine creatures use Earth's magnetic field. Stresses on the food chain or unpredictable migrations could have created further food insecurity and competition between hominin species. 
the totality of these challenges, including the climate change and competition with modern humans, likely work together as an ensemble of stresses that led to the Neanderthal extinction. For example, Numerous aspects of the competition between species may have been driven or enhanced by the stress of the geomagnetic reversal on the climate, photosynthesis, overall physical and mental health, etc. Modeling them as independent variables is a potential error in itself. Now, there does not appear to be mathematical errors in Timmerman 2020 or an issue with their conclusion within the scope of their model. However, the model is too narrowly focused for its main issue. The conclusion exceeds its scope and falls well short of meeting the criteria to identify the causal end of the Neanderthals. Further study is required to understand these complex processes and effects, especially given the recent, well-publicized geomagnetic changes ongoing today. So, this is the rejection email I received after what the editor admits was an unacceptably long amount of time. He says he received comments from Dr. Timmerman himself and from another anonymous reviewer, who he assures me is an expert in the field. Both are listed on this image in terms of the responses, although it is actually unclear which part is from Dr. Timmerman and which part is from the anonymous expert reviewer. Although you can see below one is called reviewer's comments and the other is called the rebuttal, so I have to believe the anonymous reviewer is first and the listed items below are from Dr. Timmerman. Let's start right in the middle there with what we presume are the reviewer's comments. He claims that the missing papers I identify are not a good enough reason to publish my letter and that the paper was merely a modeling exercise, but that's not really what his conclusion is, is it? He says the only realistic scenario. And he didn't just miss the papers, he missed the entire topic known to be important at this time in history, omitted it completely. This level of journal cannot be behaving this way, ignoring their own previous papers and the number one journal in the field. Now, let's move on to what we presume is Dr. Timmerman's rebuttal below, and I'll first point out his attention to detail in the listing of items, item A, item B, and item 3. Not a good, careful, thoughtful start, doctor. Now let's start with A, the claim that there are no correlations between extinctions and geomagnetic shifts. That is utterly absurd. If you look at the bottom, by the way, below item three, the last sentence, he basically says the co-occurrence of the Neanderthal disappearance and the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion is a coincidence. Well, then I suppose it was also a coincidence that the Gothenburg magnetic excursion about 12 or 13,000 years ago, which has now been shown to have been a global event, occurred right before the Younger Dryas and the extinction of many megafauna. There are numerous indications that other geomagnetic excursions cause significant biosphere stress, including the Blake geomagnetic event, and including a paper that included Dr. Timmerman himself as a co-author, and which we'll come back to momentarily. In item B, rebuttal claims there is no way the ozone depletion mechanism would work. He addresses the pigmentation hypothesis of the 10-year-old paper published in the same journal, but does not address the genetic differences demonstrated in Channel and Vigliotti from last year. Author clearly did not read this paper or chose to ignore it. He plainly fails to address the relevant work in the number one journal in his own field. Moving on to C, or rather, item three as the rebuttal puts it. He says there is no evidence of extinctions at the Icelandic Basin geomagnetic excursion. That one is 188,000 years ago, at least in their models. It is no question why he is ignoring the Gothenburg, Lachamp, and Blake events in the third portion of this comment. And as for the claim that there were not extinctions at that time, we don't really know what happened back then, or even if that timing is correct. And so now we come back to that paper previously co-authored by Dr. Timmerman. Their paper starts out by brilliantly explaining why you can't just look back 188,000 years and ignore the more recent events. Discussing even more recent time frames, they remark how scant the data is and how uncertain the data is. And I'd love to know what Dr. Timmerman thinks of the ongoing dating debacle. We have the Tibetan ice cap, which had its age cut to potentially a 50th of previous estimates. There's a crater in Australia they thought to be 300,000 years old. Now they think it's 120,000 years old. There are dozens of such examples and simply no real way to reconcile these results with the totality of geological and paleontology dating. Something utterly unacceptable to me is the ignoring of the other points I made in the letter. 
I mentioned the biospheric effects of space energy, which are now becoming well explored in the literature. I brought up the UVB problems plants can have, and how changes in the magnetic field stress migrations and various aspects of the food chain. I then explain that not only do these strengthen the case for the geomagnetic cause of an extinction, but that these items, including the climate change at the time, contributed to the competition Dr. Timmerman identifies as the cause of the Neanderthal extinction. Modeling them as separate factors is an error itself. Migration changes, climate changes, and everything else involved in the geomagnetic event would have been a root cause of the enhanced competition with modern humans due to things like increased interactions at more scarce resource zones. Finally, I summarize by saying that there is likely merit in the model created, but that it cannot claim to decide the extinction causation of the Neanderthals. Not only is the geomagnetic event ignored in the original paper, which is like ignoring day versus night when gauging the temperature outside, but the review is plainly contradicted by good, peer-reviewed science. Folks, Dr. Timmerman was the original author, Dr. Hillier Marcel is the editor of the journal, and the reviewer he brought on board was anonymous. From ignoring well-established science to cherry-picking for item C, or item 3 as the rebuttal put it, this entire theater is an embarrassment to the QSR journal. Don't think for a moment that ignoring a key topic like the geomagnetic changes is academically acceptable in a paper like this, and don't think a half-cocked and factually ignorant rebuttal debunks the world's best writing in the world's best journal. My letter is linked to read for free below this video. I showed the entirety of the rationale provided by the journal. I wonder if they really believe this stuff, or if they just didn't want to publish a letter from the likes of me. Be safe, everyone.